So in this video, we're going to calculate the diffusion capacitance for an example PN junction diode. And in this example, we're going to assume uh, the following parameters. So the, the donor doping, ND, uh, is 8 times 10 to the 16 per centimeter cubed. The acceptor doping is 2 times 10 to the 15 per centimeter cubed. The diffusion coefficient for electrons is 25 centimeter squared per second. For holes, it's 10 centimeters squared per second. The lifetime, mean lifetime for electrons is 5 times 10 to the minus 7 seconds. The mean lifetime for holes is 10 to the minus 7 seconds. And the area of the junction diode is 10 to the minus 3 uh, square centimeters, as well as we're interested in the a diode bias voltage of 0.55 volts. So that's a lot of uh, that's a lot of parameters. But what are we what are we really looking at? Um, well, we know that we calculated a, an expression for the PN junction capacitance previously, or the uh, diffusion capacitance, if we're being specific. Um, and we said that if I lump all the all the terms outside that I don't want to that are common to both the N and the P diffusion capacitances. It's the electronic charge times the area uh, times E to the bias voltage V naught over the thermal voltage phi T, uh, all divided by two times phi T. And then in the terms that aren't common to both, it's the diffusion length uh, times NP naught plus the diffusion length on the P side or for holes uh, times PN naught. Okay, uh, this expression just basically involves plugging things in. There's not a lot of thinking to do here, except for making sure that uh, everything that we're calculating actually makes sense as we as we go along. Okay, so we know most of the quantities in this equation. Uh, we know A, we know V naught, uh, we know phi T. Oh, uh, by the way, we're going to say that the temperature is 300 Kelvin. Uh, so phi T is 25.9 millivolts, approximately. Um, so we know phi T, we know Q. Uh, the things that we don't immediately know are LN and NP naught, uh, LP and PN naught. But those we can just relatively quickly calculate. So we know that LN uh, or LP, if you just switch around the subscripts, is just equal to the square root of DN uh, times tau N. And so if we plug in dn times tau n, that's 25 centimeters squared per second, times 5 times 10 to the minus 7 seconds. And so seconds cancel as we, as we expect. Centimeters comes out front uh, after getting square rooted, centimeters squared getting square rooted. And we'll get a value of 3.5 uh, times 10 to the minus 3 centimeters. And so this makes sense. It's not uh, 10 kilometers. It's not a million miles. Um, the, the units and the quantity it seems reasonable. Um, similarly, if we calculate LP, uh, we will get that LP is just equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 3 centimeters. And that sounds similarly reasonable. Um, so no, 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 nothing crazy going on yet. Uh, now, if we want to calculate NP naught, um, we know that that's just equal to NN naught times e to the minus VBI over phi T. Uh, we know NN naught is just equal to ND. Um, so we just need to calculate VBI really quick. Uh, so VBI is just the thermal voltage phi T. And as a side note, you might notice that we're always dividing phi T by phi T. Uh, but I still find it helpful to include phi t in these expressions just to make sure that we're, uh, we, we do more, as many sanity checks along the way as possible. Uh, times the natural log of the doping concentration on the p side times the doping concentration on the n side divided by ni squared. This number you should have memorized by now for silicon, uh, 1.5 times 10 to the 10 per centimeter cubed. Um, as as with phi t, 25.9 millivolts, no, oh God, not milliwatts, uh, millivolts at room temperature. So if we plug in all those quantities, uh, phi t log of 
NAND, the units uh, clearly cancel just right off the bat without us having to do anything. And we'll get a value for VBI of 0 0.707 volts. Okay, um, so if we plug that into our, val our expression for NP naught, uh, again, we don't really have to worry about units, so I'm not gonna not gonna make a big deal about this. Uh, but if we evaluate NP naught, we'll see that we get uh, we'll see that we get uh, 1.13 uh, times 10 to the five per centimeter cubed, and this seems low, um, but it is the minority carrier distribution on the P side. And we know that the, the P doping is about 10 to the 15. So 10 to the five times 10 to the 15. Yeah, that makes sense. It's about 10 to the 20. Uh, so we're, we're, we're doing good. Um, same with PN naught. Uh, if we just calculate that real quick, um, we get 2.81 times 10 to the three per centimeter cubed. And we know that the doping on the N side is higher uh, than the doping on the P side. So we do expect this number to be lower than the uh, NP naught, and indeed it is. So uh, we're, we're good there. Now all that's left is to plug everything into our original expression for the diffusion capacitance, which we have here above. So um, I'm gonna first do a quick units analysis on that equation, just to make sure that everything we're plugging in is, is safe. So if we just rewrite it here, uh, Q times the area times, let's see what's left, uh, E to the V naught over phi T, all divided by two times phi T times LN NP naught plus LP uh, PN naught. So if we just plug in everything all at once and then make sure the units check out, uh, we'll get 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs for the electronic charge times the area, which above, I believe we said was 10 to the minus three square centimeters times e to the V naught over phi T and V naught we said was uh, 0.55 volts. That's just our, our diode bias voltage. So 0.55 divided by 0.0259. And this doesn't have any units, so we don't have to worry about that. Um, all divided by two times 25.9 millivolts. And then LN is, uh, what, what do we say it was above? Um, oh, goodness, I didn't mean to move that. Uh, 3.5 times 10 to the minus three centimeters times NP naught, which was 1.13 times 10 to the five per cubic centimeter, uh, plus one times 10 to the minus three centimeters times 2.81 times 10 to the three uh, per cubic centimeter. And that's a lot, uh, but we're gonna just real quick make sure that all the units check out. So centimeters cancels with centimeter to the minus three to become centimeter to the minus two, uh, which cancels with our centimeters squared up front. And same thing happens with these guys because they're added together. So we got rid of our centimeters units and we are only left with uh, coulombs per volts or coulombs per millivolts, which is charge uh, per volts, which is the units of capacitance. So we're, we're doing good. Um, now, if we just plug in all these numbers and making sure to make sure that this is a millivolts, not a volts, so make sure to put a 10 to the minus three afterwards, uh, we'll get an answer of 2.07 times 10 to the minus nine farads or 2.07 nanofarads. Now, what if we had a different bias voltage? So what if we had uh, V naught was equal to say 0.61 volts? Uh, what would the answer look like then? Um, well, it turns out in that case, the answer would be 20.9 nanofarads. So if we increase the bias voltage just by a little bit, so from, from 0.55 volts to 0.61 volts, the diffusion capacitance increases by a f just about a factor of 10. So this is a hugely voltage dependent capacitance and uh, you always need to keep that in the back of your mind. Um, it being a, a nonlinear 
capacitance that we're just approximating here. But this should give you a sense of uh, an order of magnitude for how these how these things work. Um, and so uh, that concludes the video on the an example problem for calculating the diffusion capacitance. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to post them down below. And thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.